Last night, I found myself in Philadelphia's Crane Arts Building, where a ton of hip artists and art lovers were enjoying several avant-garde art openings. After relieving myself in the Crane's spacious men's lavatory, I went out to talk to my old friend, Jenny Baker, about her show. Am I supposed to say something else? Yes. What? All right, <laughs> introduce yourself. Just oh. my name? Yeah. OK, I'm Jennifer Baker. The show is a survey of the paintings and monoprints I've done of Northern Liberties over about 30 years. And the first one is Fire at the Old Tannery. It's about a block from our house. The tannery was a Superfund site, and it had been leaking green ooze for many years. Many fires started just by buildings being left open, and people would go in and cut out copper pipes or camp out and start fires one way or another. And the smoke was so heavy and thick that it didn't even rise. It hovered over the neighborhood for a long time. That image was so terrifying that it compelled me to start making paintings of my neighborhood and documenting what I was seeing around me. About her monoprint tire dump, Jenny wrote, the massive Burke Brothers tannery was a favorite destination for people dumping old tires. One night, our neighbor tried to chase off some dumpers and was shot at, so he decided to leave them alone. I haven't worked on these continuously for all that time, but every few years I go back to this theme of Northern Liberties. Abandoned car, American Street. Along with short dumping, the abandoned cars in the neighborhood made for a bleak environment. This car sat at American and Wildy Streets for years, gradually decomposing. The Morris Chef Furniture Company had a storefront on Poplar Street and a warehouse on American Street. A raging fire in 1993 destroyed the entire structure, sending up intense heat. After the fire was extinguished, the jumbles of burned ruins were left in place for three years, and the smell from the fire never left. I started out doing mono prints, which are really fast, and I've gradually evolved into doing paintings. Monoprint is just a single transfer print, and I use mylar, which is a plastic sheet, as a plate to paint on, and then transfer that to paper. The paper and the ink and paint makes textures that, when you pull them apart, I like to work with. Also, the technique of doing monoprints forces you to work really fast because you have to print them before the paint dries. But I gradually started spending more time on the images and the painting that I did on what was supposed to be a plate to print became paintings. Gradually I just started really liking the surface of the mylar. And the paintings that I'm doing now, I'm using the translucent quality of the mylar. The light comes through and it gives it a certain quality that I like. This giant crane helped dismantle the tannery. The story of the tannery, the ambitious plans for its reuse, the demolition, the remediation of the polluted site, the building of the park with its playground and community garden, tells the story of the neighborhood in a microcosm. I first moved into Northern Liberties in 1978 when I graduated from the academy. I rented a studio at 3rd and Green Streets and then we had a house on American Street for quite a few years. I no longer live in Northern Liberties but I spend most of my time there at my studio. That corner where my studio is has drastically changed just in the last few years. I've watched these buildings go up. Most of them are built very poorly. They're selling for like a million and a half dollars and completely changing the character of the neighborhood and completely blocking my view. This painting is looking out my window. I have a big half circle window that faces west. This building as it went up gradually blocked my view of the city. You can see the very top of the dome of the Ukrainian Cathedral on 6th Street, St. Michael's Church, and these are landmarks that you could see from everywhere in the neighborhood, and now because these 
new houses are getting taller and taller, you can barely see them. Kevin the Builder. Kevin has built a bunch of buildings. He built buildings right next to my studio. We got to know each other because he had to use my yard to build, you know, the wall of his houses. He's looking out, surveying his territory. Was Kevin building things that are blocking your view? Yes. <laughs> yes. Why are you memorializing him in art if he is blocking your view? Well, I'm not really memorializing him. I would say we have sort of a fraught relationship. <laughs> I think at the moment he's not speaking to me. But he was also kind of an interesting guy. I got to know him during this process. Demolition, 4th and Wallace Streets, is the most recent one I've done. It's different than anything I've ever done. I actually used a photograph in the center, although it is painted on and changed somewhat. The whole thing is a collage. It has the photo and then about six layers of painted mylar cut out and attached. And I use the translucent quality of the mylar so you can see through the windows to the layer behind it. So the telephone pole with the signs, that's painted and then cut out, and that's one of the layers of the collage. And for some reason, I really like painting those signs. Do you think this is a direction that you're going to continue to pursue? Some of the other paintings that I did this past year, I used small collage elements, but then this one, the whole thing became a collage, and I really enjoyed working that way. So I suspect I will explore that more. <laughs> Living in Northern Liberties and then starting to make images, I became really interested in the history of the neighborhood. I started to wonder about why these changes were taking place, why the neighborhood first emptied out, why all these businesses closed. Commentator. Established in 1855, Burke Brothers was one of the largest tanneries in the largest leather manufacturing district in the world. In 1995, the city demolished the abandoned building. It took two weeks to bring it down. The commentator watched the whole process, remarking many times on the waste of a perfectly good building that had stood for so many years. In 2011, I did a history exhibit at the Philadelphia History Museum. They have a community history gallery and I worked with the Neighborhood Association and curated an exhibit that was not an art exhibit, it was just a history exhibit and it had historic photos and interviews and artifacts and it was really interesting. I learned so much more about the neighborhood and what forces were behind these changes that I was seeing and painting. Are you optimistic? No, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not optimistic. Most of the history and memory of the neighborhood has been lost. Most of the old industrial buildings have been torn down. A few have been reused, repurposed, but the vast majority of them have simply been demolished. The character of the neighborhood is changed in a way that is not a positive one. I mean, a lot of the construction is just so extreme. It's so out of scale and character of the neighborhood. Clearly done in the interest of greed rather than reasonable development. I love Jenny like a sister, and there is no one more politically liberal than me. And I think she's right about greedy developers threatening Northern liberties. But sometimes Jenny brings out my inner Joe McCarthy. Mrs. Baker, Salisbury, how long have you been a member of the Communist Party? <laughs> I'm not Mrs. Baker, Salisbury, Mr. Thornton. <laughs> you didn't answer the question. <laughs> nope. <laughs>